the kid from the wrong side of town gets his dream job. Well, I'm going to try and not stuff it up. I can never say I'm not going to. If you want the thrills, we're going to hit the roof. Prepare for the spills. Oh, oh, oh. And a mystery illness baffles lifeguards. <laughs> Working on Australia's most famous beach might appear a dream job. But Bondi's newest trainee, Jesse Pollock, is quickly discovering it's not so easy. Yankees attention to all these swimmers once again. Can you move back over into the flags? There's a dangerous current. Please move up into the red and yellow flags. You, move back over into the flags. Most of the people that you end up rescuing, you know, you've told them 10 or, 10 or 20 times, you know, to go back over, but I guess it's all a part of the job. You are all just about to get caught in the rip. And trust me, it's not fun getting rescued because everybody laughs on you at the beach. Bondi has a history of colourful trainees. It gives you the other end of the spectrum because we fire up off the, off the young spirit. The teen spirit, is that what Nirvana says? First, there was Blake, who grew up 80 kilometres from the coast. It's just, they make everything look so easy and it's not, it's not even close to being easy at all. Put them back on, buddy! In the end, Blake chose a very different career path, becoming a Mormon missionary. Working here has made my beliefs much stronger, I reckon. And I guess, as far as my beliefs go, there's probably no worse environment you could work in. Then there was Maxie. At 16, Bondi's youngest trainee. I'm keen to work here for 50 more years. Or... Maxi broke another record. He took three years to finish a two-year apprenticeship. No one could ever say I didn't start off from the bottom. Next was Dunno. He cruised through, followed then by Jake and Max Ashford. Now, there's a new kid on the block. Jesse is a bra boy. From a tribe of surfers with a fearsome reputation for big waves, big parties, and antisocial behaviour. It comes out in the media that we're all these people to do this and that, you know. We're not, we're just a tight community that, you know, will look after anyone, you know. If something might happen to one of their mates and, you know, everyone just, we're all brothers, we all stick up for each other. Barely out of primary school, Jesse grew up surfing some of Australia's most dangerous waves. Here we go! His mentor was controversial big wave surfer, Kobe Abbott. I come from a family that I didn't get three meals a day, I was lucky to get one. And to travel the world and have your sponsors looking after you, all I needed was a sidekick and I got Jesse and we travelled and surfed and partied and had a great time for five years. I was lucky that he took me under his wing and you know, I wasn't going to let him down. So yeah, I went everywhere that he went and yeah, living the life was unreal. He looked after me like he was my older brother. Taking risks in the surf was one thing, but Jesse was breaking rules on land. His endless summer came crashing down when he was convicted for dealing in the proceeds of crime. I was at a young age and I'd done some stupid things, trying to put it all behind me now and move on and, yeah, you know, hopefully everything will be OK and just forget a couple of them months. He narrowly escaped a jail sentence. Now, he's been given a chance to make a new start with a different band of brothers. If we can pull him around and change his attitude and, and change the way his life is, you know, we, I, I feel um, that that's a, a satisfaction for me, you know, as, as being a boss of the lifeguard service. You know, I was just so lucky that I got the chance, you know, so I'm never, ever, ever... Well, I'm going to try and not stuff it up. I can never ever say I'm not going to, but I'm going to try my hardest not to do it and, yeah. Jesse has one season to prove he's up to the task. Yeah. 
It's a quiet weekday during a temperamental summer. There's a call to the tower. I've got a young kid around in pain. He's holding his stomach. I'm just going to check him out. His mum ran up to me. I could see him on the shoreline there, eh? At South End, a young surfer suffers severe stomach pain. Hey. What happened? 11-year-old Calvin came to the beach with his parents. Tell us what's happening, buddy. What's happening? Yeah. I was surfing and then I just... Just and relax. Yeah? Just, just out of the blue? He was just surfing and he came out of the sea and he started complaining about stomach cramps. So I let him sit here for a while and I thought it would sort of pass and it didn't. It just got progressively worse. Yeah. Terry needs help diagnosing the problem. Bobby Yaldwin, Yak, is part-time lifeguard and full-time paramedic. Bob Yaldwin being the paramedic that he is, Terry's asked for further assistance to uh, see if they can ascertain what's up with him. Bob is a paramedic. He's also a paramedic. This young kid has been... Hello. Complaining of just out of the blue abdominal pain. Okay. Whereabouts is it? So around there. Do you been hit by a board or anything? You haven't, no? Worse when I push? Right. And has everything been normal lately? All been good? Just came out of the blue, did it? No. Alright. Now tell me, is it definitely in the middle here? It's not on the right hand side here? It's a little bit here, yeah, but mostly in this. A little bit middle. here. Now obviously I can't see you haven't had your appendix out before. No, you haven't. We all get an ambo down, yep. We're going to go with an ambulance. Ambulance, please. It's a little bit to the right-hand side, which may, may be his appendix, I'm not sure, but he's saying it's more central and just a little bit to the right. As lifeguards try to get to the bottom of Calvin's problem, another drama unfolds at nearby Bronte. Ronnie lifeguard to Bondi. We've got a board rider off the back of the pool. A heavy swell pushes into the exposed beach. The nori swell just sort of angles in and it bounces straight back out that rip and it's so strong. An inexperienced surfer has been swept half a kilometre out to sea. As the tide drops, it exposes Bronte's dangerous reef. Bacon heads out. He's quickly followed by volunteer lifesavers. Mate, the clubbies here just launched their IRB. I don't know if they're going for the same thing. Yeah, looking at them now, it looks like they're going over. Uh, we should be okay then. You see a way out? How do you get out of that We've got a race going on between Ronnie IRB and Bacon. I'll put my money on Bacon. It's man versus machine to get to the surfer. Yeah, I think Bacon's won the race. Uh, thanks for that anyway, Bondi. We uh, won't need the jet ski. The surfer is transferred to the IRB for the trip to shore. Oh, legend. Bacon charts a safe course back away from the reef. But the rescued surfer is being taken on a far more dangerous path. Oh, they're going to get smart. They're going to hit the reef. Oh. 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 The rescued surfer could now be in much bigger trouble. He's, he's just behind, he's behind the boat. Yeah, no. No, 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 they're there, they're there. Luckily, the only casualty is the boat captain's pride. <laughs> I was having lunch. In the back room and I heard people roaring. <laughs> it wasn't the ride Brazilian surfer Jose was expecting. Did you hit any rocks? No, no. My good news. I was lucky, man. <laughs> lucky twice. I caught a wave out the back and by the time I turned back around there was people scattered across the rocks. Pretty bumpy coming in, but all good now. There's absolutely no way through there. It's just rocks. Then it goes into the bogey hole, so was, they were gone from... Uh, from the start. I've never seen that in uh, 34 years of life living here. I haven't seen that done before, so it was pretty impressive. <laughs> it's the first time I rolled the f thing in five years. Oh, man, it's a good day to do it. It's a great day to do it. Obviously, a lot of people around the coast of Walk have seen it because the fire brigade, ambulance have all been called. But um, now, 
it's all over. Everything's OK now. All over, except for an uncomfortable march past Harry's. Just to cut the new side off, let's go down to the ship. <laughs> Back at Bondi, 11-year-old Calvin's stomach pain has worsened. It's OK, champ. We're going we're gonna to take the pain away, all right? <laughs> It's all right, mate. This will help, all right? You've got to breathe through it, mate. Just, you've just got to breathe through it and try and relax. Lifeguards administer methoxyfluorine. All right, leave it in there. Better known as the green whistle. Just try and nice and slowly, all right? Nice breaths, just as you're breathing normally. The powerful painkiller should take effect in seconds. It's all right, mate. It'll work. This will work, all right? Your body's got receptors and the pain signal has a pathway it goes through and it's just blocking those pain. But Calvin is only getting worse. Oh, my oh, I know, mate, I know. Unfortunately, we just got to wait for the ambo, mate. Keep, keep trying to breathe through that methoxy, OK? It'll be here shortly. It's normally what we would do with this type of condition is go and get further test done. OK? So, are you organised? If Calvin is suffering a ruptured appendix, he requires urgent treatment. Up, 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 up. All right. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Where are you Talk to Brendan. Talk to Brendan. In the in the middle and, and on the side. Hopefully it's Paramedics must manage Calvin's pain before they move him. He needs more than the green whistle. Calvin's now endured 20 minutes of excruciating pain. Once he's, once he's had this morphine, he'll definitely go to City Children's. We're just trying to make it as comfortable for him as we can before we move him. By now, the strong opiate should be working. OK, so if it was 10 before, what's the number now? Righto, that's a 10. The green whistle provided no relief from Calvin's abdominal pain. It's getting worse. Nor has an injection of morphine. Paramedics have nothing stronger to treat him with. Just relax, mate, all right? Now we're going to lift you on this board, OK? It's only for about three or four metres, all right? We'll get you in the truck. Okay, so everyone right? Yep, I'm yep. good. No, My good. son's a very similar age to that young boy, and I hate seeing kids in pain. It's one of the things that really gets to me. They got him on the morphine, so hopefully everything's going to be OK. A trip to emergency will hopefully reveal the cause of Calvin's pain. The parents are really good and they kept really calm, and, you know, that keeps everyone else around them calm, and it probably helps in the end. But, you know, when you've got significant pain like that poor little boy had, so it's... Nothing you really do helps. He's the new kid on the block from the wrong side of town. New trainee Jesse Pollock grew up 10 kilometres south of Bondi. Maroubra Beach is home to controversial gang, the Bra Boys. Growing up your whole life in Maroubra, you always want to be a Bra Boy, you know? We're just a tight group of friends that, you know, we've all got the same tattoo and, yeah, from the same area. Our time, he's got a good job, mate. He's going well now, he's got his head down. He's doing something good for himself and that, he's saving lives. It's unreal when the boys are doing something like that. Having narrowly avoided a jail sentence, Jesse Pollock's been given a chance to make good. The boys have taken a pretty big chance by putting me on. Most probably some kid, you know, that's done nippers their whole life. Most probably have nothing on their rap sheet, you know. I don't really have a good rap sheet, but, you know, I was just fortunate enough to, you know, get, get the job and I'm going to show and prove that, you know, I'm one of the best, you know, I'm not mate the best, but, you know, I'm going to try and be one of the best lifeguards, you know. It's a bold decision from head lifeguard Hoppo. Jess was growing up at Maroubra. He's been in a bit of trouble over the years and 
You know, it's probably a bit of a risk there to take him on board. You know, it's it's he may have been exactly the same here and, and took it for granted. We've given him the opportunity to come here and, and work with an elite group of lifeguards, and he's taken that on board, and he wants to be a part of that now. He, he's a part of the team, and he wants to stay there. And he knows after another year, the trainee ships up, and he needs to perform to get on to be an actual lifeguard. It's a classic summer's day. Jesse's on duty to help deal with a big crowd and a nasty rip. Hey kids, if you've got to swim here, don't go deep, because there's a bad rip. You'll get stuck in the rip, yeah? Stay close to shore, OK? I like the big days. I'm ready to do rescues and, you know, I'm ready for the challenges that lifeguarding brings me, you know? It's exactly what we don't want, is uh, tide dropping, swell picking up, sun coming out, and people starting to arrive in big numbers down on the beach. The rip at third ramp is in full force. Jesse, can you go down to third ramp, mate? Just, just go straight down there to third ramp. With no quad bikes available, Jesse must run. I think I need him to go. Terry calls back up. Uh, central to Can Am. Can you go to third ramp before you go south? Yeah, this guy's drowning, eh? Seriously drowning. As the rip drags the man deeper, he tries anything to stay afloat. He's got his head down. I'm lift your head, mate. Jesse is first out. But now, two more swimmers need help. Jesse must decide who to rescue first. He paddles past the first two. That's it, leave him alone. He heads out for the third swimmer going under. The man is in dire straits. A life has been saved. Jesse's got one, he's done a great job running from the tower. The other men are helped to a sandbank by a Bondi rescue cameraman. You're okay. Just walk over here. You're okay. You're okay. Just walk, walk this way. You're right, you're right. Keep coming this way. This way, this way, this way, not that way, this way. Oh. A brush with death brings mixed emotions. The three men are telecommunication contractors from India. It's their first swim at Bondi. That guy was seriously drowning. He was just climbing the ladder the whole bit. They're like textbook drowning. Clothes, rip, deep water, fast running water. It's like you could see a plane about to crash. It's hectic. Jesse did really well then, he had to run from the tower, had to double time it down, grab the board, go, got out there before the guys got there with the can -Am. so he really hustled, it was, it was actually really impressive, it was great. Joe, you got caught in the rip, you are doing the wrong thing, but you done a good job of staying afloat. Thanks, mate. That's OK. Yeah, you did an excellent job. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, mate. What was every time taking me inside, 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 I was trying, trying, trying. Nothing was in my hand. I saw my dad, mom, I saw my parents, I saw my grandfather. Everybody was uh, flashing through my mind. You know, it's just like uh, we are going to drown and we are going to get, <laughs> lose our life. Almost see the guard. Hello. Yeah. And we were just watching Whatever, this guy has done a good we job. I mean, we also... For me, he's a guard. I would kind of walk down the stairs and then I just seen him drop off the bank, so I just yeah, flew down here and yeah, luckily I got there, I reckon if maybe another 20 seconds, he would have been, yeah, gone. Jesse's proved his rescue skills. Now he needs to prove he has the maturity to be a member of a very different tribe. And Calvin? His excruciating pain was caused by a blocked intestine. I hope that it never happens again. After a night in hospital and a few days rest, he's back at Bondi 
and working his style.